has never changed. 500 and, or 400. I, I'm Actually, <laughs> I have right here, and this is an assumption that this is the latest version of it. And I talked to Mike about the previous week. Right. We had 230 and 250. So you right. have uh, right. 400. We, we, we started this conversation way back. Yes. Yeah. It was over 600,000. <clears> now we're just below 500,000. It, it was never 600. It was never 600. Was that not uh, right? in the hundred? But anyways, it's, yeah. it's it is what it is, and we got to live with what we got. Um, I got to know exactly what we have, so I can go to them and we can lay out just how much of the road and what we can do. Because if you saw the price, it's a million plus. Mm -hmm. It's four now, to do the whole project. Yeah, we know we're not going to get the whole project. Sure. I don't know it. How much did you say we have? It's four hundred eighty thousand dollars. Four hundred eighty thousand. I don't know. So, Mike, I have a copy of the preliminary budget from December 9th, twenty twenty one, and the numbers here are twenty three two hundred thirty thousand for the remainder of the Main Street water replacement, and two hundred fifty thousand for the Main Street on Hillcrest. That, that's what I'm working yeah. on. Yeah. So that's going back to no, December. I don't you have the numbers. When I'm sitting right over there, I asked what we were going to have one evening that we had a million seventeen to start with, but we couldn't have that because we have other, we had other things to do with it. Correct. So when it was all done in the conversation, I said, well, how much are we going to have left? And you, you should have a little over $600,000. So Not we, you. you no, there no, would no, be. You, this was just talk. Yeah. This wasn't on. Yeah. yeah, but so it isn't. That's that. I don't care. It's never been I, 600. I, that doesn't make a difference. Okay. I gotta know what it is, and if it's 480,000, it's 480,000. We gotta see what we can get done for 480,000. Yeah. That's all. You know, I'm gonna. I gotta sit down with them and ask them to go from point A to point B and see what we can get out. Of it. <clears throat> and just hope that we can get the, at least out from underneath the new road. That's the big thing, the new road. That's all. It's Thank you. done. Uh, the other hand up was from Erica Flynn. Yeah, so the same issue that we just didn't have time to talk about prior, because I think we're going to have a great time, but is the selling the sell property in lieu of asking the taxpayers to increase the taxes for the school budget needs? Um, you mentioned before that you thought it would need to go to auction. So I'm curious as to why it could just be sold in the normal process. Sure. Because it seems to me, I mean, it's been there, the town has had it for 20 years. And it's not really benefiting the town in any way, correct? There's no taxes being paid on it. And there's been two opportunities to sell the property at a premium before the 2008 crash and now just past the market going so high. And it, that hasn't been done. So I mean, and right now, the only thing it's doing right now, there's no landscaping. It's got those donation boxes with different hideous. So I'm trying to figure out why wouldn't we just sell that property instead of going to taxpayers for more money. So that parcel is also a part of the mixed use district that has gone out for an RFP and we actually had two respondents a part of respond to the town on. And that there's a goal there that's that's some of the commercially owned property in town, right? That's my understanding. Yeah. And that that would become a parcel that you could have another general type store on or a barbershop, a bank, you know, something to that effect is what the what that property should be built out to do. And what when this mixed use housing project finishes, then that would be a great space for that type of vision in that area. When the RFP is done? Uh, we had two responses. The Affordable Housing Commission is reviewing them now, and they'll be coming before the Board of Selectmen to look at tonight in the or next week, I think. <laughs> yeah, tonight is just going to be an overview of what's been happening. Um, my hope is that at the next meeting we'll have uh, the committee in and they can make a presentation. Uh, then it's up to the board to interview. Uh, the one or the two candidates uh, and uh, make a decision to award a lease agreement to the successful candidate. Sure. And that That's sort of the goal of that property. This is part of that excuse. 
And then, so then the town will be basically selling it to the rest of the rest of the house. Well, we can sell at least, yeah. It's tied in with it. We have no affordable housing in town, so getting affordable housing in Dunstable is a very important project. The goal is to try to make it like a new point, but. Yeah. yeah, sure. But, you know, you could have really, you could have some projects that come down the pipeline that aren't you know, in, the, in the hands of the guidance of the affordable housing group that could really push the town to its limits. There's one on our own land that has some tax, you know, other tax streams to it could be pretty valuable. So to have this as a reoccurring revenue in source is ideally the goal for that, not a one-time deal, sell it, and then that money's gone. I, I get that, but that's been the thought process for 20 years now, and it hasn't really happened. So what point do we say this is going to work? And well, it hasn't been for lack of trying, honestly. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, at what point do we kind of push it to Well, we're getting pretty close to catching something. We're hopeful. I mean, it's people, you know, it's the best we can do for what we have going on. And, and selling a town owned commercial pad is not a, it's one of the few town commercial owned pads. Thank you. Anyone else from public forum? Uh, before we shift into the new business items, we have appointments. Uh, looks like we have the Brown Police Department, as well as the appointments for the Bu Public Safety Building Subcommittee. And the Townsend Police Department. And the Townsend Police Department, which I don't have, but I you take your word for it. Uh, Right. Yes. Yes. Any motions for? So I'll move that we. I'll take Townsend. I move that we appoint the Townsend Police Department list of appointees dated June fourteenth, twenty twenty-two, to um, to be uh, reserve officers for the or special police officers for the town of Dunstable. And that list is, as I said, at June 14th, 2022. List. As prepared by Chief of Police. Um, yeah, as prepared by the Townsend Chief of Police. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the other one was from Chief Michael Luth of the Groton Police Department, dated May 2022, for the fiscal year 2023 appointments. So I move that we appoint. The Groton police officers as special police officers for the town of Dunstable, based on the list provided by Chief Luth, dated May 20th, 2022. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, good ones from July 5th. Uh, this is for the town of Dunstable Public Safety Building Subcommittee. Uh, I'll read the names. It's uh, Ron Michael, Harry Fontaine, Henry Fontaine. John Crandall, Jeff Rosen, James W. Dow, Matt Naughton, and Patrick Kerrigan, with all these terms expiring in 2023. I move we accept the appointment list as read by Chair Nian for July 5th, 2022, for the um, public, safety. public safety building committee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That shifts us to new business. Uh, first on the agenda is approval of end of year transfers. Uh, we have only one. I don't know if you want to amend the list or do you want to put, you, put together the numbers based upon uh, our accounts that we have here, uh, the town hall accounts. Uh, we had uh, uh, Expenses in excess of fifteen thousand uh, dollars, some of which is the twenty-four hundred dollar replacement of the town hall, main entrance store, utility costs that have gone up significantly over the course of the year due to the the current situation with gasoline and uh, Russia and, and Ukraine uh, being at war. Um, a water bill uh, that exceeded the estimate, landscaping. 
um, emergency expenses, uh, the $300 for the bandstand, as well as uh, uh, job uh, advertisements that we've had over the course of the year that normally we probably wouldn't have had. And the recommendation would be uh, that we take the 15500 which is a little bit more than the total of all of the outstanding expenses. We're just going to cover ourselves with uh, something for men and then we uh, transfer that money to the snow and ice. Do we need any advisory board approval for this? It, you're going to need it. Mm -hmm. You need to vote on it and then we forward it over to them and they vote on it. Sure. We haven't gotten any others in, so I'm, I'm, that concerns me a tiny bit because I, yeah. I don't know whether I just don't want people coming in the 15th and say, oops, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we sent it out as part of the uh, uh, expense uh, sheet that we send out of the show with cotton heads with the notes saying, you know, hey, this is the time you need to put them in. But to date, I haven't seen any additional ones. So. Do you, do you have transfer requests for those so that you go into the chart of accounts the right way? How is that? Well, what we'll do is, is that we'll, just one number you're looking for? We're looking at 15,500 and then we'll transfer it out of the snow and ice to those individual accounts, which will offset okay, the okay. deficit. So you're taking it out of snow and ice. Yeah. You know. okay. so Does I, the transfer fund form need a selectman, board of selectman signature? Or does that just go to AV? Have we used the form? Yeah, you did use the form. We do have the form, yes. I didn't see the form in the packet then. Okay. Well, who, do we sign that or does that just go right well, to the chair signs it? Yeah, and then so it, it goes, if you vote on it, the chair signs it, it goes mm -hmm. to advisory. Advisory is going to be meeting next week, uh, okay. the 13th, and they're going to take up all the interview transfers. And, I can grab that and I'll go ahead and the chair and sign it. Mm -hmm. Get me, pay me and move the money. We did meet last week and we talked about it, the need for a meeting. For them and to come that, together, yeah. The yeah. only problem would be something that's forward at this point. Uh, it has to be uh, voted upon by both of the boards. So. Okay. If something comes in, we might have to be an emergency meeting. Hopefully, we'll have 48 hours. Post. We can still do a remote meeting until July 15th. And then that's going away. So we need to be. Let me see that. You have both of them. Sure. Um, all right. I move that we approve the. Transfer request of $15,500 to be transferred to town hall accounts to be transferred from snow removal supplies yeah, to various town hall bills that are unpaid at this end of the year. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sign of that. You get any more? Do you respond to that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, to us. Like, so like, like, yeah. It's sort of be unexpected. Might be worth another email. Mm -hmm. just to say, hey, oh, okay. Yeah. Because that would turn in, uh, anything that's unpaid after 15 is going to be a priority bill. And that's right. going to be a problem because it's going to have to go on to a town meeting warrant. And right. It's like a nice so end of the Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, next on the agenda is ARPA reallocation for. COVID-19 related back wages for employees, pay schedule increases. Okay, there's a little bit of history here. Um, in the last month or so, um, I've had discussions with, uh, uh, with Bonnie and other employees uh, <laughs> relative to a, uh, a wage and classification schedule that had been adopted. Uh, which included a three-year bump. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the first year that bump would have been available was 2020. Uh, however, that was right in the middle of the pandemic when things hit. 
And I think that it just got overlooked as okay. a result. So we're looking back historically, and we have a number of employees that should have gotten that uh, increase. I believe the increase is 2%, correct? 2%. And then yeah. if you get in the step increase, you get an additional 2%. Mm -hmm. So at this point, uh, our obligation uh, to the employees would be um, just in the eyes. $29,160. And the suggestion we had talked about originally, a big concern was, geez, that's a lot of money. We don't have the money. Uh, what can we do to... Uh, so what can we use as a funding source? And I, I'm talking to Lisa, we had a meeting with Lisa with Bonnie, uh, and uh, uh, she, uh, Lisa said that she uh, would be comfortable putting it through the ARCA program. And uh, we, once again, similar to the end of town meeting, we had costs associated with that. Sure. Uh, we reallocated money from uh, the, sixty thousand. Yeah, the sixty thousand. Yeah. It was brought down to fifty thousand, and uh, it was down to fifty uh, thousand five hundred. If we take out twenty nine thousand one sixty, the balance in that will still be twenty one thousand three forty. Um, and at, at this point, I, I, I don't know if that's even if we're going to expend that twenty nine thousand. 340, we had nobody come forward. I don't know if it was ever advertised. It never we, we never the intent got was to get help people up pay bills right. and things like that, but nothing has been taken out of that account. So this is going to be the second reallocation of funds, uh, the 29,160 to provide the back wages for all of those employees who uh, back in 2020 uh, should have received the increase but didn't. And all the individual employees listed in the schedule uh, with the amount. And, and if you have your magnifying glass, you should put it up on the screen. Or <laughs> so the 29000 is it's going to bring you current. It's going to bring us current. And then what's the annual reoccurring number? Uh, well, we have it for years. Uh, well, this new fiscal year. Is the second step increase. So I did include that the rate should be for fiscal 23. Um, they're off because we, when we had town meeting, we budgeted based on no step increase. Right. So um, that has to be considered moving forward. Yeah, yeah. They're it's reoccurring. And um, some won't get theirs for a while, but most of them I took. Fiscal year 17, that's when the program started. And anyone who was in the 2020s or had been back before 17 automatically started on July 1st of fiscal 17 and July 1st of 20. But anyone starting work after that period, their um, step is based on their anniversary date of hire. And the third so year yeah, hire strikes the yeah. Three year, two percent. So I guess the question is how how do you fund for twenty three and can the employees use those rates? What are the best practices here in this scenario? We're going to technically save our, <laughs> save ourselves with ARPA money. With yeah, well, money. Yeah, absolutely. It almost, I don't think it'll be a su substantial it going forward because it's, it's hitting all at one time. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be more of a staggered effect. And, but I, I honestly can't give you a, a real time estimate on how much that will be. Doing. And hopefully, we're going to be solving some of our problems come next year in terms of figuring out how we're going to. Support a, a working budget that uh, is not heavily reliant on the cash. Yeah, Jerry. Yeah, I just wanted to. Um, this data is new to this background. Um, 
back in 2010, DOI recommended that the um, town have this kind of thing in place. Um, they recommended a process to implement um, a formal wage system. Um, and that way there you can, uh, to make things better and to keep better employees to keep them current. Um, the um, Board of Selectmen actually, um, they assigned the town administrator back at the time. We've also had changes in town administrator, so it's been dropped. We don't have a personnel board here um, anymore. We also don't have a personnel department. Um, but one of the things in the bylaw, in the general bylaw, says that uh, to ensure the preparation and maintenance of a comprehensive compensation and classification plan, including pay schedule. And <coughs> so the town actually is in violation of our bylaw because they have kept up with it. Understandably, because of COVID and the change of town administrators, things slip through. Um, things slip through the thing. I know um, the police department, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, has done the bump with your employee, or I don't know if it's more than one. Yeah, so we, so anybody that was outside the union, we have that as we have that application chart. So what I'd always do is every time the administrator would come, I would force to update because the thing with this was too is that it's it's, it's an accurate document. Right. It moves. It's yes, changed. people come and go. Right. Right. And well, your right. and your right. date of hire from three years that point on right. changes. Oh, absolutely. Um, the, the Board of Selectmen, they, um, back in 2016, they adopted the wage and classification chart. They also passed the personnel policy. So it's, it's been done. And now we have to, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, it falls in your lap to turn around and tell us, mm, we don't have the money, is it our problem? It's, it's unfortunately your problem, is the Board of Selectmen. Oh, no, no, um, I, I, you know, I don't know, and I don't think any of us sitting here saying you don't deserve it or right. you no, shouldn't I be getting that. it. I it's know that. It's just I finding a way. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. But for, the, for us, it's like, again, I was looking out for our little guys, you know, a library and, yeah. and, and, you know, so the highway and, and uh, you know, the people that work on here on behalf of the town hall and police that won't come to the meeting. You know, I'm retiring, so I don't want to be <laughs> <laughs> because you know. But, well, somebody's okay. got to advocate for you well, guys. I mean, that's right. part of life. It's, I mean, it's part like of the, being the, a part of a team. So. Yeah. You know, I, I feel bad intentional no, by any no, means absolutely you're right and we not. need to no. sort out how to prevent this from happening no, no, no. again yeah none of us are blaming you or david <laughs> he didn't know anything about it until yeah. we brought it up and and so um but it, it's still it, it's something that needs to be on the town administrator's radar or whoever he appoints for the future because we no longer it might need to actually talk to somebody that's on the personnel board i got a hold of his number, he called me and we discussed it and he said, absolutely, everything, three years, there's something to be involved. 
Yeah. Because that was the whole reason to keep people to, you know, kind of a thing. So oh, I'm absolutely. Consented. I remember I was part of doing that when I first started on the board here. And I guess I wrongly and ignorantly just assumed that somehow that just got incorporated into the Absolutely. wages. Yeah, they passed it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, thankfully, thankfully, the police has somebody who's on them on it. <laughs> so how yeah. would it, I mean, it, there isn't a, a calculation that goes into what you're to pay. Well, I mean, what, I what should be. I don't understand how. Yeah, there's a lot of layers works, to this. But, First and foremost is we have to make sure we pay your back wages. I'm yeah. a believer in that. You can ask anybody, I believe in PTO, all that stuff. It's one of the most important things of being an employee, especially a long-term mm -hmm. one. Like people don't stay in place as long. It just yeah. doesn't happen. Right. So we will find a way to work with David. And he's, it's a creative approach to use some of the ARPA funding to do that. But what he is still some there to make sure we pay yeah. you properly. What probably has to happen next is, I know the personnel board is rather defunct, now, I think that's the proper way to describe yeah. it. Yeah. But it, it'll become a, a task of the town administration person, persons, whoever it is, that this is incorporated into their budget every year. Because just like the police department has a staff person, highway and staff person, you fall under that umbrella. And long story short, a town charter is truly where this gets organized properly. Where a personnel board doesn't exist, but we have an HR process that goes through the town, and you have an executive in the town administration role that actually oversees all of this properly. Because there's apps for this. If, if, if you can imagine that, there's literally a computer system that does this for you. Which is I assume. Yeah, and like, but like, would it be nice to have something you could? Yeah, because yeah. Excel is awesome, but like a smart sheet does a lot of this for you. Like, <laughs> and she has got this so that it's where it should be. And I don't want to see the employees told, well, we're going to keep working on this and we're going to keep working on this. This needs to be implemented July 1st. Needs to be, they need to get the current salary and what they're supposed to have. This is, yeah. uh, this is. Current, right this now. This is current. Okay. This um, fiscal 23 is the amount that each person would get if they get another step increase in 23. That's the correct hourly wage. Basically, you're just taking a place you started and shifting everything to the right one place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All yeah. the way through. And then calculating it on the anniversaries of those right. date right. changes right. as they come. So, so it's a. Look at my it used to be 21. That's what I was making now. Now I should be making what's under 2023. Yeah. So, um, you know, my, my plan, I hope, is to July 1st put down the new amount and um, for a whole four weeks that I'm here. <laughs> we did do the payroll uh, for the first day of PESA, fiscal 23. And I spoke to Susan and told her that we'll have to do a retro on that one day just mm -hmm. because we haven't met with you yet and we want to. Jump ahead. Right. Right. The car before the horse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll have one year basically of the inappropriate amount, mm -hmm. and somehow we'll have to find back pay for that next year, right. and then jump it to the get back onto a FY twenty four. Right. So. Yeah. So are you saying in twenty three they they have to stay? I have no idea. That's what I'm trying to. In 23, they would all be paid in one Right. I'm assuming that's what you're saying. Yeah. The end of the because we've already year, adopted the 23 the budget town, that. 23, the town needs to figure out where the deficit is going to be. They right. don't, it could be a fall town meeting. Well, it should that's what I was wondering. We, we, we would have the amount on the radar, right? I guess. Yeah. Because it's an amount. It's a, but for what year? What 23? <laughs> yeah, can you, I mean, can you revise your budget? You can't really revise your budget yeah. halfway through. Yeah. Doesn't this, yeah. <laughs> doesn't this 29,000 fund you in fiscal 23? It catches us up. It catches, it catches everything up. It catches you up until June 30th of 22. Yes. Okay, so the 23, the number for 23 doesn't exist anyplace. Correct. So Just the hourly rate. The hourly rate does, but right. yeah. Out. And so, uh, if you don't have the answer, you don't have the answer. What's the number for twenty three? 
Total? What, yeah, what's what's it going to cost? No, I don't have a number. I just have the rates. Okay. I didn't go that far. <laughs> okay. Um, so the rates are going to be one hundred and twenty-five. I think we can straighten this out and then yeah. somehow we're going to manage this better so that this thing doesn't get the way it is. I, this, I don't know what happened here. The tire fell off the wagon somehow. I, mean, I get, yeah, COVID is nuts and things like that. And this is, it's, so, but it's not fair to it's not our fair employees. No, not. So that's why it needs to be, and it's not fair to put it all into one, you know, or try to spread it out, you know. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to think of a way that you distribute could, it in, in yeah. accordance with the chart that was prepared. Yeah. At bottom. Yeah. Okay, so let's just do motions through, right? You can make a motion. So, so yeah, I mean, I, it's you got to fix it. It's no good the way it is. I don't know how it, how it did, why it got like this. It's just, it's probably a couple different motions, right? It's because we're going to take some of the, ARPA money and retool it to say that 29,160 $29, of the 50,500. Is that calculate, Bonnie? Is that is that overtime number calculated into this 29,000? No, it's extra. It's so do you, do we know what that is? Oh, it's small money. So it's but it's yeah, added in. Yeah. We gotta add that in though. Yeah, right? 30,665. Um what what was it? 30,660, roughly. That's a little bit more than they choose, but so if we move 30,660, mm -hmm. you can provide to cover the highway guys over time and the new rate. Yeah. And we're cool with that. We're not gonna, all right? That's and all we gotta do, it's, it's right. all retro. It's all retro. And all we need to do is source the revenue for 23 and make that adjustment. But in order to do that, we would have to reopen the budget. Or you can't get the time. But we would, right? We have to reopen the budget. Yeah, so it would change everyone's wages. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Can't you just? It's kind of like that. You know, just you pay people their new rate, but towards maybe April or May, you're going to run out of money. Yeah. At that time, you have to pay them. That's the law. You have to pay them. Yeah. But then oh, you right. have to figure out how to put the money back into the general fund. Yeah. So what we're saying here yeah. is that if we can calculate that number for twenty three, and it's ten thousand or whatever it is, right? We've got time to figure out where to source that revenue. We put it in there. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So the next step in the process is to, is to come up with that number. You know, back a while ago, we used to have the budget was done on Excel, and there was a and, and there was an equation built on the bottom of that budget. You could punch in that number, and it would tell you it would calculate out. Bonnie, you may remember this, right? You calculate out what that wage increase was for all those employees at those rates. And then we got away from that and we went to this, whatever we're doing now, and we lost that calculation. I don't know whether we can, <clears throat> and you may remember that Excel spreadsheet that advisory board used to work on, because we used to put it up on the wall and you could put, put in 2%, one and a half percent, you could screw with that all day long. And it would tell you what that number is. Yeah, I've, yeah. Had, I've actually put together wage classifications where you change one number. Yeah, and then it's just, it's just yeah, because right. yeah, no math. What, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> they, yeah, no math. Exactly. So oh, no, no. at some point, that do it, right? I think, or yeah. good thing. Good it just seems like a lot of work for clients to get on this. Yeah, but at some point, we need to just, we, sure, we do need to get to that number and not. Um, when I first started here, Towards the end of the year, they were short on my budget when the water came out. But they paid me because they had to pay me. And at the end of the year, they did a transfer to, to make that up. Um, I don't know whether you'd be able to come up with that number because we've got the North Library works different hours. The person might work 30 hours a week and 20 hours a week the next week. I will certainly, depending on if there's an issue with the road, trees down, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
I, I just think, I don't know. It feels like more of an end of the year. That's what I'm thinking. I think that's what you're more like, I think yeah. by May, you're going to see that. You're short here. You yeah. got a little plus there. You're short With there. Salary, yeah, you might you're going to be hiring somebody probably at a lesser rate than what I am making. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have probably an excess. And, and, you know, that kind of a thing. But um, I, I don't know. I, to me, it just seems like it would be. I know Bonnie has a lot going on in the next month before she leaves, including mm -hmm. hiring her replacement and training. But it just seems to me <laughs> like it. And that hasn't been budgeted properly. The budget has 58000 for a treasure collective. That doesn't take into consideration that I'm here another month and a half. So that's going to eat into that new yeah, absolutely. Person. So there's going to be shortage in that budget, too. So it's very hard to calculate. I think what you said is true. You're going to see towards the end of the year where you're lacking, and then you're going to know that you're going to have to fund whatever that amount is yeah. back into the general fund or whatever however it's done so we might be able to do that in the fall i mean we should could be able to track it for just a few months and then reopen the budget in the fall and adjust it so then we have a few months to go yeah. back and do a retroactive pay or try to fix the problem and then create you it. could have an epic hurricane right though i mean i guess you have, yeah. to, have, you have to have a little wiggle room there well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most of the budgets will stay relatively even. Yeah. It's just the uh, highway has overtime. But other than that, none of the other departments that we're dealing with right now have overtime. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a you have a general idea of what the wages are going to be. Within the next few weeks, um, turning into new payments. Yeah. I see a question from Joan, and then I know we have to get back to the motion at some point. Joan? Um, yeah, I uh, traditionally, I, 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 I recall, who's correct me if I'm wrong, that you know, a 2% increase was traditional you know, for. Uh, you know, at least in the last few years for town hall now. Is what we were talking about here different than that? Or, you know, did they just not get their 2% during COVID or just, just. Yeah, so. The, a little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both, but <laughs> it, it's, we, we, had, we always had our cost of living increases yeah. accounted for. When someone would strike their third year of employment, and someone can correct me if I'm explaining this wrong, no, you no, guys know. No. So, in the third year, you know, day one of the third year, they get another two percent added on to their hourly rate that they were working at. So that year, that year, they get four percent based on the cost of living increase plus the anniversary. It's like a retention retention That's bonus exactly is the goal yeah. because people don't stay Just with like them. The school parts, they have their steps. Yeah. The steps right. for longevity, longevity, longevity in the town. Yeah. And based on what Cheryl was saying is I think in 2016, it was approved by the select board prior to that in, in set, yeah. yeah. It, 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 COVID hit. We had we've had some cycles in town here. We've missed it, so we're trying to catch up the back wages, and then we're going to try to find a way to fund fiscal year twenty three hourly rate for those people going forward. And it's every three years, right? It's a three year step. It's the anniversary of the third year. Yeah. yeah. And there is a maximum, but I don't know if it's a moving maximum. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But that yeah, that makes sense. Well, sure it's because you know, back in 2017, that, yeah. you know, I'm sure it's the whole point of making an hourly on the chart is that you apply the cola to those. So every year we go take the chart and update hourly rates across the board. So your minimum and your maximum do shift over time. Yeah. Yeah. The whole idea is to make it so that when you go to replace someone, you're not paying an extra premium because the person that retired is being paid so much less than the market. We see schools do like salary grades or salary ranges in bands. So, did that answer your question? It did. Okay. I'm going to shift back to 
Ron, right. who was talking about emotion at the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seems like forever ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I will move that we transfer from the opera fund an amount of $30,660 to be used for the rate classification adjustments as provided in this um, spreadsheet that I can't read the date on it because I don't have my reading glasses. But... There's no real date, just says data higher than it. Yeah, so, so the retro pay <laughs> spreadsheet, the re yeah, the retro pay spreadsheet yeah. that was provided by Bonnie. So that amount, my motion is for thirty thousand six hundred and sixty dollars. So you'll be able to take care of the highway guys, and you'll have. Yeah. All right. That means there should be a transferring it from yeah the resident utility household relief fund, which had been set up as part of the original uh, proposal to a new category called uh, um, retro pay, retro uh, pay. <laughs> back pay which, you know, we haven't set that up yet so there's no yeah, there's no there's account, no account account number for it. yeah so it's clear where the money's coming from so that it's a reallocation it's a reallocation from a resident opera fund yes. to the um rate classification do you have that jake that up greatly. All right, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Yeah. And then we got to figure out a way to prevent this from happening and have it calculated into the payroll. Well, course, yeah, the this is more of a functionary question. For these guys who are retiring soon, if, if we we're going to have it. We're going to owe them a check, right? Yeah, yeah because to make up, yeah, to make, yeah. All right, just making sure that everyone's make, covered. Yeah, make them whole. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we need to um, issue the retro pay in the next pay cycle? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the fund, we have the ARPA yeah. funds. Yeah. We have yeah. the funds, we just transfer it in so you have the money okay. in that account. I think all you got to do is. Be sure that there's a an account set up to put that money please, in. Please, please, please. Okay, yeah. good. You need a chart. You need a, an account number, Bonnie. The other question I had, and this is um, two of the employees, the veteran agent and the animal control officer. I didn't know how to deal with those two departments. Um, one year they got a raise, another year they didn't get a raise. So I did do the bump just like I did everything else, but I didn't know whether a stipend for me, if this has an effect on it, or if they should have been getting the 2% every year also. I, 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 if you're a stipend employee, then you're not our way. You wouldn't, you know, there's no, there's no mechanism in there. But you, you get a stipend, here's your money. Okay, that's, so yeah. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, stipends, yeah. So you have a little extra money. <laughs> but within a personnel definition, it, there's no wage classification, if you will, within the personnel board in terms of a person working for the veterans department. They were on the wage So that's my, yeah, that, that's so if they are on that, classification they probably should be a part of this but they're stipend employees they're not paid out so but yeah, they they're they're fixed you get fixed you get a, you get a, yeah you get a stipend yeah. and there's no hourly they you know they are charged with working 10 hours a month no, no. no. like that well, there were 10 hours or five hours yeah so yeah. I, I don't think they're part of the wage classification structure for stipends the select board was stipend at one time right right <clears throat> Usually, and the inspector. Correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, you know, because your husband's not here to do it. But usually, uh, with stipend employees, you forego a whole lot every year because it's going to be a lot of money for them when the sums are as small as they are. And advisor for usually just looks at it every couple of years and gives them an increase. So, the gas and plumbing inspector got like a $500 increase on the okay. a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, they do increase it every once in a while, or if an employee gets a stipend asks for an increase, which is it almost feels like a, a comment on the sheet. That's what I think of like a Google sheet. Be like, you know, be aware of veterans or you know, inspectors, making sure that every few years their budget's current, right? Otherwise, we could get socked later on. So I think that covers. 
<laughs> Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Uh, You're going to be here in three years to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next on the agenda is a police detail for special town election on July 19th, 2022. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right, let's yeah to to Phil's request, let's move larger field. Yeah, larger field uh, status update. That's okay with Eric too. Yeah. Okay. You're up. This is free. I don't know. I have just a little to share. So last about a month ago, um, we went off and started to get some uh, estimates. Uh, Mr. Tupper, he's not valid anymore, so mm -hmm. that didn't pan out. Uh, we've, we've got some estimates from Elijah Wells um, and uh, Northeast Water. So we're going to discuss them tonight. Um, NEA, the landscaper, has also done some investigation of the lines on the field and toolboxes and the heads and all the yep. contraptions. And he's found some issues, some breaks, and some things to be fixed. He submitted an estimate for repair. Mm -hmm. So he's talking. About um, for $3,500 to start, I think there's maybe more. Um, the, uh, the wells uh, from Reliable, they were talking about reconditioning them. Um, they gave me an estimate for every well. I hope every well does not need to be reconditioned, but we, we also need to know how much flow we need. Yeah. Um, and so there's all these technical issues that are kind of coming out of the woodwork now. Yeah. Uh, so we really want to get a handle on, you know, originally it was the well was going to produce, we need to worry about that. Now we're finding there's breaks in the lines, breaks over by the softball field. So we're getting, we're going to get these, I'm going to advocate for preparing them tonight. Yeah. Since I'm in a new fiscal year, I've got some, yeah, <laughs> some latitude now. Yeah. Um, so um, love, we've also reached out to uh, Orbit. Who's the irrigation firm? Hopefully, they've done some work on water as, as another kind of independent. Are we doing this the right way? Can you give us some advice? Um, that may involve maybe spending some money with them just for technical support. Sure. Because this gets to be technical quick. Yeah. And I'm a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to spend the money wisely. Yeah. Um, so, really, that's just kind of where we're at. Um, I think, I don't know if you have any burning questions, I think maybe I, I can give David an update after tonight as to what transpired with the, with the board. Yeah. I'd be curious to learn where the board takes it, and then, you know, I, I've walked the field almost every night, so I see it's in it's pretty still, dire shape, yeah, yeah. Uh, which may be just the way it is for, till you know, things sort of go come out of hibernation dormant mode. Well, we are in a drought. Um, <clears throat> but what Gene, Gene Fallon says, you know, when water comes back, yeah. we're also looking into kind of drill rigging some manual watering. Um, so we were able to get some water to flow, um, but I'm not sure how much we can cover the fields. Uh, Brian from Copper was supposed to meet with uh, NDA today and see what they can do about that. Okay. So it's a learning process. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're spending, we're doing as best as we can in the situation we have. Yeah. I'll say. Um, obviously, things go slow. So yeah, for sure. Um, so that's kind of my summary. Questions, comments? Yeah, New England acreage, right? <clears throat> so you have this $3,575 quote. Yeah. Okay. Are you looking for this board to approve this? What? No. Well, you're not. I didn't know you had. <laughs> yeah, it was sent out to us. Yeah, I sent it out. Okay. <clears throat> so that's a part of Rex. <laughs> At least right now, because I have problems with this pixel, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have Do you have the revenue source to pay for this? Yes. You do. And then what about this hundred dollars per watering, right? Because New England Acreage wants to come in and water the grass for hundred dollars each watering. Right. How's that being handled now? Is that? It's not being handled because the board hasn't discussed. It. Your board. They're meeting the, the, They're meeting shortly. Okay. We're meeting in seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. In a few minutes. To... So we're trying to do things no for me. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to get all this paperwork in. I don't know where all the paperwork flows, not to shut you down, but uh, 
there's there's the sentiment that that's too much and we can figure out some more amenable way to paying our guys paying NEA a hundred bucks at, at, at some unknown frequency yeah. to water the grass. So I mean I don't want to presuppose our committee's discussions on this without having to discuss. Yeah. So yeah, I mean there are other quotes floating around that we need to sort through what do we what can we do and where do we want to go and what's the wise way to spend money. So I, I think you guys ought to sort that out. And if you have the revenue stream, go ahead. But I just only have one thing. As I read through this quote, right? Yeah. This, 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 this guy is going to excavate and repair breaks. Was that system winterized? Maybe his contract required winterization. Yeah, but did, did it actually happen? That's a problem of volunteer boards to verify that work is actually done. Yeah. We don't have the means to do that. No, I know, but isn't it actually? So they they may have they may not have. I have no knowledge of the here. Yeah, but here's but here's I mean there's breaks here that have to, have to be repaired. Okay. I can tell you there are three outside here that are broken. Town hall, because I was here, I saw it Friday. The okay. water's run down the street. No. All right. And so there's a pattern in my, I'm just looking at this and going, I got this stuff going on out here where there's these lines are broke right in this lawn, right outside here that the, the irrigation system's broken in a couple of spots. Okay, didn't know. It is. <laughs> it, it, and it so it's the same guy did all the winterization, I, you know. The previous contractor had an omnibus activity for all the different parts yeah. in the unit pattern. Yeah. Which included the police station, and the town hall and water would be in the police. So you guys are still working this through. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. Yeah. In three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. <Yeah. laughs> when, I, when I joined Phil's meeting, the Parks and Rec's meeting a couple of weeks ago, it was, you know, there was some efficiencies gained when you have it all under one landscaping group to do maintenance, cutting, everything. And we learned that perhaps that group wasn't, you know, did, didn't have the right follow through or whatever. I mean, blowing out lines is one thing, doing it properly under the right pressure is a whole other thing. So it might be worthwhile, I can speak for parks, but, you know, for them to look into when they have the time and the ability to, you know, to separate out the maintenance or the winterization activation of the well process. I think that's sort of what I gleaned from your discussion that night. Right, and yeah. that's why I put in the last minutes. Yeah. We are going to actively pursue that and I'll work with David on what yeah. we could do to make it structure with our contract. Yep. Um, that's all, that, you know, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's a consensus. I mean, historically it has worked. For the time that I've been on parks, which is five years now, it has worked up to this point. Yeah. We've fallen off a cliff for whatever reason. I'll never Couldn't have been last year when there was like ample rain, right? Like every day it was raining. <laughs> it's always the year that it's yeah. drought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and thank you for giving us an update. Okay. We'll see what right. Dave's bullet points afterwards. I, I appreciate the emails and Thanks. Thanks, Joe. See you later. Joan, you have a question? Well, not for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, Parks and Recs meets in two minutes if you I, want to hop on I that board. Yeah. Yeah. He's under the gun. Yeah. Well, thank you. So uh, we took that out of order. Police detail for a special town election on July 19, 2022 is on the agenda. I don't have Carol here, but I'm guessing she already took care of it. There's a new, there's a new rule in there. Yeah, the board of selectmen has to approve a detail for the elections and not the town clerk. Anymore. All right. So we need to make a vote on that then. Yeah. Yeah, the general board just updated the rule. Yeah. So I'll move that we provide a police detail for the special town election on July 19th. All those in favor? Is that it? Second. Yeah. Oh, second. yeah. <clears throat> Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, next one on the agenda is the finalization of creation of intern police captain position at police department and police chief sick time buyback. 
We actually skipped over the approval of implementation of goals for municipal employees. So wasn't that rolled into the? Wasn't a part of the? No, no the two guys the two percent proposal versus the retroactive. I will eat my words and go back to approval implementation <laughs> of COLAs for municipal employees. Well, Lisa's just asking for the. Yeah, do we know the number? The the number the two percent was incorporated by Susan throughout the entire. Oh, program. so you're just looking for an approval on approval on the percentage? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. And FinCom is okay with it. They they voted to approve the project, so I would say. So it's what it's kind of knitted in. It is knitted. Okay, so I'll move that we um, approve the COLA for municipal employees for fiscal 23. Correct. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And now back to the. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. I thought it was roped into the other one. Uh, now back to the finalization of creation of interim police captain position at police department and police chief. Six, nine, five, nine. I know we have the police chief here. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess Fire away. it's really just what I presented in the past. I think we had a conversation already over leadership because at that point we made the decision to <coughs> just because of the way the policy contract was structured, just to get that position to move forward in a, a smoother transition. And I think we're really there. So, as far as that position, I've had some conversation with David and town council, and there's multiple ways to do it, but I think we are agreed that. An interim contract that has language that Eric discussed not going to be like that would lead to the people that come out of the union that just some of the basics that we've talked about is protections, you know, a pay increase. Um, basically, somewhat would mirror my contract, but just different hours. Mm -hmm. and I think that's really what we were looking to do. We would be interim. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think the only thing that we like that would be a language change. Looking at that, that the progression that we move forward, that we had expected that there would be a little bit back in the creation year. And then we would, so we do have language that talks about the promotion to lieutenant. That would be the future. If there's what? There's uh, language that goes back to the promotion of the lieutenant's position, and that's an assessment center. Oh, okay. So just, yeah, it's all language based. Really, we, you know, understanding this, it, it's, it would really what it does is it would protect everybody and keep the town, mostly protect the town, so that nothing is that illegal or below the or anything like that. So it's really more employee and employer protection. Yeah. Do we have a contract in place right now that speaks to the captain's position? Uh, we have uh, a draft. Uh, which we did my school to tell them again. The draft somewhat mirrors my my agreement with rights protection. Okay, there are some things in the contract Rob who doesn't have an error that speaks to this because he drafted it because it's in his employment. Mm -hmm. So he would have to speak on that. You know, there are some things that would probably get there. Yeah, you know, so just little things like that. So when I say there's different things, I I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it that what is it that you'd like us to do tonight? So I think we we talked about this at length at the last meeting. So I think now what I'd like to now is really what the board is voted on is the ability for Eric to reach into creating an agreement and then creating a position. Well, I can't create a position until we create an agreement. Well, I guess you could should you do it and have an agreement in place for that position before you again. Because when Eric acquires that position, or you know, however he do that, he's going to come out of the union. When you come out of the union, you need protection, especially in Africa, especially in this day and age. You definitely need some sort of protection. No, no, I, I, I get all that. I just, I, I don't. I mean, it, it, which comes first, the contract and the position, and then he needs to get appointed into that position, right? Exactly. So, do we need the so there's a couple of pieces. Yeah, we're going to establish the position. Okay. Because yeah, we said finalization. So my assumption is we're establishing. Okay. And once we establish the position, yeah. at that point we can negotiate the agreement okay. for the party requirements. Okay. We have we do have a, a template for that. that we template have. for the position. Yeah. Uh, template for the contract. Yep. A template. 
And then, but what about the definition of what the position is? That we have that as well. Yeah, we yeah. we have. Uh, I have access to that. Okay. Okay. So, just and this, David, this thing's um, Mark Carrier that can move right and sign off. Yeah. Or whatever yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Cool. So, so right now you're going to ask the board to create the, the captain's position, and then once the position is created. What what's the timeline to appoint the individual into that position? So for me, I think that it would be as soon as possible for Sue to start a program a little bit a little bit different leadership. So I, I don't know being here forever or that much longer for all <laughs> So I think that having this in place and then having where we had some hardship earlier this year, having somebody in place who clearly was capable of the last experience. Having no place that transition is very easy. Um, I'm watching some control just wants to happen. It's kind of like difficulties that there's a whole thing more for you folks. How do you know what like a this position does or that position? Where yeah, yeah, this position I'm not aware of this for a long time. Yeah. And I can admit to somebody doing that. You know, I have some knowledge about the parts of how things occur. So it's just that it is something training and yeah. creating that yeah. will yeah. really develop an uh, appropriate session. Yeah, which is good. Succession plan in place really takes a lot of pressure off the board, the public, the department. The department, yeah. Most of them are employees. Yeah. So I, I think that's really where that says okay. why it's important. I mean, certainly, you know, I, I acquired my job. Somebody told me I was getting that job and they left and it was two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> because the third week I had a vacation plan. So I was like, can you just come back for a couple of days? <laughs> <laughs> that's normal. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You've learned from those lessons, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. Look at that. So, right. So, I think that, and it's important to me. Like, I've been in this organization, I've been a police officer in science language. Like, this is important. Yeah. Making sure that things get their transition well, it's, it's, it's a big deal. So, we're going to create this position. And you have a job description. You'll have a job description, but the position is not filled at this point. It's not filled at this point. And it's also just interesting. Well, it's whether it's interim or it, it, that I, I, I hear you, but I'm just trying to follow the process. The, the board's going to create the position, and then at some point in the future, Eric would you're, at, you're going to ask the board to appoint Eric into that position. Yes. What's your timeline on, on, on this? When, when, when are you looking? I mean, yeah, we do this tonight. And so, you know, tomorrow you get started on creating the job description and, and getting a contract in place and all the rest of that stuff, okay? And then you got to appoint somebody into that position, right, Eric? You're going to present Eric as your candidate for that position, right? What's the, what's, what's the end point in that? When, is it next week? Is it a month? My real goal would be yes. Yeah. We all know I would like something about that's possible. I understand there's some difficulties and times getting things together. And I know this is vacation times for everyone. But I would, I would, um, I'd like to expedite the process the best possible to have everybody be able to create more of some terms and, and keep the ball moving so that, you know, selfishly it allows me to make a decision as to why it's So it's a bit selfish. But... Okay. You're also trying to enable the proper. Yeah. Shift. Yeah. I, I have a question from Joan, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, you said this would be interim. Yes. Uh, I confused about why would it be interim? So, because currently the town doesn't really have a position that directly like really follows the chief, and I think that. So part of the other part of having somebody that comes from the organization internally is you create an answer for everybody else. So if we do this, then interim in that position goes away. We have a plan in place after that to create the tenant. And that plan in place goes back to the successful tenant. So part of the interim thing is just to have this position to assist me to create a leader, a leader on my end as well. There's lots of reasons. In there. If you have something that's going to a meeting and it's a lieutenant, sometimes there's not looked at. It was sometimes it's a weird kind of thing, and mm -hmm. it's part of it. But again, I do think the most important thing is, you know, just to create that position that's outside the meeting. Because 
know, there, there's agreements or there's there's components. The defense position would probably be outside the union. I think with that we're negotiating, but there's components for that motion to take quite a bit of time to. So the intent is to make the defendant's position permanent. We would I, we would like to we would like to. So during my tenure, for the most part, I have an asset. I, I think that now as we're growing, you should become busier more like the, the, the keeping up with that, I believe. So yes, we use that word like that. Um, I think we would at some point like to recreate that or really our goal would be to or the department's goal would be to recreate that. Just so you have that separate if there's many things that that person about like internal affairs investigations to separate the chief from that. It makes sense if, you know, I just, I was a little confused about, you know, whether the position was going to be Eventually, permanent, or whether it was just a uh, whole Yeah, no, so that, I don't think the captain's position, there, there's no hole in my mind with my conversation with, you know, people inside the organization, and me included, is that eventually the, the captain's position will lower because the union certainly wants to have the ability to get promoted too. Because as well, I mean, I can explain it, there's a whole other process too with becoming a lieutenant. You have to have, have been a sergeant for a certain period of time. So whoever becomes a lieutenant most likely or obviously will be a sergeant. And then now we're in another position for another person to you know acquire that sergeant position. And all of that responds back to as we talked about with the original classification chart tonight, is retention. And so people are inside the organization and have the belief that they will have the opportunity to at least try to get promoted. I think that that's just really important. It's that mindset that you know what, I'm not going to stop here. There, there's going to be some And I can tell you from some of the people that have left the departments that would be the reasons. So let me ask this, right? Captain's position is functionally a higher rank than a lieutenant. Yes. Okay. Why, I mean, if, why do we not want to have that captain's position stay in place? Well, I think the reason we, we could, but we don't have a component in place right now for that actual promotion to that position. But we do have in place um, the process of promotion to the town. And again, I do, it is a higher, it's higher rank and maybe over time we create something that's different. But as a lieutenant, we will draft our own job description. So we could set into place some of the responsibilities of the lieutenant to be some things that are other than our Okay, I understand. So, yeah, so I, you know, we can really build that position up around what our needs are. You know, the ideal needs are. And really, that's, I think, in the future of the department, those will be the administrative needs. This, this police reform is absorbing us or absorbing our needs. And so, if we do this, right, with this captain's position into entry position, <clears throat> is this going to in any way affect your ISO certification or, or accreditation? Yeah. No, right? It's just not an issue. We haven't found the why. The only thing in light of that is we may have to change some of the verbiage as to who's responsible for certain things inside of our policies, but that's what me and Eric do. Um, so like for us, we'll know what to change because eventually this is an entry position, so we don't want to change too much. Some play within it. To, yeah. Yeah. It's where everything touches everything. Right. Right. You need to wiggle. Okay. okay. Yeah. Ready to go. Just a quick question: what is, what is a deputy chief versus having a captain? I'm just curious. It really depends where you work, but oftentimes a captain, again, to the language of what his job is going to be. Yeah. Sometimes assume some of the things of a deputy chief. It's really just a rank division. Okay. Deputy chief is oftentimes incorporated into a bigger organization. So there's somebody that's you know overseeing pretty much everything in the way. Okay. And the chief is strictly administrative. Um, I mean, we need to be deputy chief, you know, every day, every other day, or something like that to to first um, the operations. So the chief is really strictly pretty much admin. That's basically the deputy chief will be deputy chief job in the country. Right. Right. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move that we authorize the 
creation of an interim police captain's position at the police department. I will second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Very well, it's helpful that you're doing this and sort of strategizing change, yeah, which sure. <laughs> makes it much easier for us to. Are you guys here for the diabetes no. topic? No, we have another ride. We have a little ride. If it's okay with you guys, I'm going to take it out of order because we have a couple other long winded topics to come. And I just, I was like, kept looking. At yeah. I finally saw like the apple on his shirt. I'm like, I must be here for the apple. I was wondering if you were here Thank you. Thanks, sir. Can you say that just once more? Yes, you just want to reestablish that in the rest stop for. So the only caveat that you have is this year, the um, the roads under construction. Which one? One thirteen. Heading towards Tings Road. Okay, that's in the construction office. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Oh, well, I have a question. And he will figure it out for you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank if it's on a weekend, is it on a weekend? Yes. Yeah. Then, yeah. It's not a race. So the, the only yeah. issue is that um, because the, the road is under construction, if that is your path that you're going to travel on, um, <clears throat> you know, currently we've had a um, Toward the cure that has, yeah, they've asked to um, for permission to use the group. And we granted them that position. And, and there's only one caveat in it you do need to contact Mass Highway and get their assent to use that road. Okay. okay. They, they won't do that. They won't. No. So <laughs> the town, if, if, we, if we say to you, okay, use that road, all right? And, and there's an injury or an accident out there as a result of the construction project that's going on. That, that approval by the town is not this, this, this wide net of no problem. If something happens, we'll take care of it. That's, that's not what that road is. If you've driven on it, it's dug up um, and it's gonna be in that state of construction until next summer. Yeah, so you could essentially, if you were coming off old exit 35, exit 90, route three right there, okay. and you went up and took a right on the Thorndike Street, went up and around high and came down here, you'd go around it. You could bypass it. You could completely bypass it. So. Yeah. 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 
Are we these right for us? We start to send out um, spies. They're not even going to tell them. Yeah, yeah, they're not. You're not. You're not touching on it at all. This no, is the. This is the. That's the tour de cure. Yeah, oh, these know. guys are the Shova Valley peddlers. Group. Okay. Uh, so the, oh, there's a. Less, there's mean. another. There's a, a way around it, and I actually saw a biker on the one thirteen. Well, if you have the way, I'd be on the phone. I'll show you the way around it. Yeah, yeah, we can probably give this to you. To be honest. Well, this is what we usually do. I'm sorry, I just brought the one. But um, what we usually do is just come in and go out. And then our people who do the extra 100 go out down Main and then come up high. That was just um, a big, this is- this right, is So our, our construction is happening basically from the town center. You walk out of here, uh -huh. look, turn left. Yeah, I noticed the stuff when I was coming yeah, in. Yeah, so yeah. from there all the way to the cemetery. Okay. Is what is under, so under construction. We have to get out a different way. Well, you could on this map here. Yeah. So this is um, this is ADA. This is town hall right here. Yep, yep, I know where I am. Okay. Yep. You can bypass it by going up around this way. Oh, we can do that. It's actually a much nicer In ride, this, so, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> so this is Thorndike Street. Yep. High Street, uh -huh. there, right onto Thorndike. Yep. And then just follow that all the way, then this brings you out. By um, McLoon's barn. Okay. Yeah. Barn is there. Little Red Schoolhouse is over there. Okay. And that puts you on to 113. Yeah. Uh, but if you uh, do you loop, you come back. If we have or, to. No, we just have to get down here. I think they just because um, they do Shriver Hill. They do Westford Street. Scribner. Scribner. Oh, Scribner. Sorry. Scribner. Scribner. Yeah. Yeah. Westford Street is right in the middle of. So the we project. might. They may have yeah. to. You may have to reroute it. I don't yeah, care he, if he because otherwise to get back to there you'd have to come back this way and go like that. But. Is that feasible or not? It is. It's a long way. It's okay. They're strong legs. But you, you, you just have to stay out of the construction zone because there is liability associated. You yeah. go up into Tingsborough and Cummings and come down that other way. So we could, yeah, yeah I mean, this is corner Street and everything. Here. They could go in another way. You could keep this would put you on 113 for a little bit. You keep this going, is, get into Tingsboro, and then you take a right onto well, they may have to do that, change it. Um, because that, that would bring you out this way and put you back onto Lowell Street, and then from Lowell Street, you can work your way down that way. Yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. that's a possibility. Yep, uh, we're open to any to, Logic, you turn right onto it's not Logic Locust. We will, we have yeah, two like months, yeah, yeah, we have two months to redo it, yeah. and we do it, we do do it every year. We change things around, and okay. some have been drastic, like um, Neshoba Valley, where the hospital is. <laughs> they had that all dug up the week mm -hmm. before the century, we had to move around it, yeah. So, we've done this in the past, and we have no qualms doing it, yeah. Um, it does all loop around. So. I will, um, yeah, get that to information to my root master, as I call them, and um. Let okay. him work. It's, it's, it's such a complicated thing. I won't go near it. <laughs> yeah. I know the overall, I know the basics, but I let him handle the details. It's a certain position, yeah. but that's, um, we could tell him your concern that we don't want anybody on the construction yeah. and move, move from there. That's so that's, you give so you know, power. this is um, for the tour. Yeah, they're, they're actually uh, waiting for us to get them that document, which will be prepared by council. So they have agreed to sign off on it. They had uh, approached DOT about using uh, 113. They said it, it's a town issue. They had yeah. no say over it. It's basically casting it in <laughs> However, um, the, uh, the group has proposed a way to not it's, I mean, it's in tough shape. So like you said, they can find another way around a little longer, but are it's a better ride, to be honest. Are they, gonna, are they still going to use the center for a rest stop? Are they going to get there? I think they can get to that without they can get having to it. actually entering the zone. The okay. Yeah. Zone. So if they can do it, we can do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine because I do. Um, Tim, actually, the person who runs ADA, he used to set up a, um, a little handout place at our, the beginning of our century for publicity. So mm -hmm. I, for the past, for let's say, in 2016 to 2019, I would kind of hang out with him in the morning and we discuss our rides and things. So yeah. Yeah. I'm amenable to speaking with him and discussing what we can do, figure out. We might as well put our that put all our resources together and come up with something. So yeah. I understand your concerns and yeah. 
All right, great. Thank you. Thank you for being flexible this year. And maybe next year. So I know I took that out of order. Do we need to vote on a modification for the tour to cure version? Or we need, what do we need to do? We don't have that. We're waiting for that from town council. Uh, uh, the whole harm is we don't have that. Yet. Okay, all right. Yeah. So he did uh, provide us with that map that showed how they were not going to the, yeah. the center. That's it. Okay. So our Neshoba Valley peddlers are good to go. And our. Um, we can do the same whole harm as for that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's a whole harmless agreement that releases the town from our liability to somebody. No, where do you find that? We're going to get it for you. Town Council is going to prepare it. You have to sign off okay. on it. We yeah. sign off on it. Okay. We'll send you an email that's coming and sign it. I just want to know that you would be likely because we're holding down the mic. It won't be an issue. Yeah. <laughs> you, you'll get approval. You just got to sign that whole harmless. It's a standard okay. boilerplate agreement. Okay. So. Yeah, right. yeah, it's just a process. Yeah. A hold, hold harmless. Is what, is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I had to get an insurance on somebody else. And okay. Somebody else something. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so going back to the agenda, we have a discussion on fire chief next steps. Uh, I guess I can give an update. We. Oh, sick time bio. Yeah, I like to just skip over things. That's yeah, no, really that's like... right. <laughs> I thought we already dealt with your police stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> shifting back to the police department, the <laughs> end. Yeah. So we had a police chief sick time buyback. So, yeah, what this really is, and I think, I, I don't know, um, I, I drafted together a small paragraph to talk about this. What this really is, is something that. Um, rather than me getting the one time buyout from the sick time uh, to allow me to take those days as time off. And if you read it, I really need days off. That would be so we have some days where there's three people. So it's three people, we don't have control options. So those would be the days that would be so there'd be no budgetary cost. And in the end, the time to those days off, there'd be no payout either. Yeah, would be approximately about, I said 12,000, but I, I wasn't really calculating the accumulation of days between now and then. So the payout would be about 12,500 or something mm -hmm. like that. It's a thought, it's a thought to um, reduce the budget cuts by the police department. It's a cost to allow me to do some other things that I want to do prior to retire and just do some leveraging. It would also give the, um, my presence and availability to. Again, the mentoring process that the organization is going crazy. So we're doing that just emails. Do you get it? Are you get part of this? Yeah. Took the org chart of it, basically. Yeah. yeah. Do you, how do you do that with your, if you were saying, you know, as soon as August of yesterday, if you will, and then how do you look at the schedule and sort of flex that out over so time? I would, I would, I have to kind of look at it really because there might be some days where somebody can take a Monday off. That I'd be on the books, but I wouldn't take that day. Mm -hmm. uh, so it might mean that my retirement might stretch a little longer. Okay. Or, or I, I didn't put that in here. Or I, I could say, all right, you know, I've used up these days to come off, but I'll be buy off this amount, which would be on the amount for the days that I have. Right. You know, to transition to the smoothly and to do this one more time. I mean, the goal really is not to, is to limit the effect of the budget. Right? So, and is to have the same coverage by availability. And you know, project savings to whether you can buy out. There's there's no loss I can say the way I see this because I'm not gonna take days off that require overtime and their the town not gonna take buy out, which comes out of the money. But another lesson I learned you know, the chief police and buy out that I have to think how to touch yeah. and that hurt. It's a chunk of change. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I was looking back at my so I guess one of the things that I was doing when I was looking back at the transition that I took were some difficulties that I faced. And so that's kind of the things that I'm looking to assist with in the transition for the succession plan. Okay. Any questions? No, I think it makes sense. What do you need from us to just 
Oh, yeah. I mean, I Nothing just, honestly, right. all I need is your approval because myself and Eric will control the budget. We both love the program. So I just, it'll be, hey, Eric, I'm not going to be in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did we get that email? I may have missed it. The, or the paragraph. It's not really, or it's not, we don't, it's not really I, in I our think it would be helpful ballpark, right? Find some kind of yeah. Or, in order, because I do think that's kind of memorialized. You know. Yeah, I, I would like that. Okay, it's probably good for both sides. I can draft it. Sure. Why don't you draft it and have it for the next meeting, and then we'll go through that. Yeah. Would that be okay? Yeah. Because then sure. it'll have, it'll I think the five better is you need to be the understanding that there's no cost, like, and I can talk about that so that. I, 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 so that it's actually good for you to do it, and I'll be a big thing. You know, I, I, goes I both ways. Think that right. You just never know. Yeah. Not that I yeah. plan out a whole plan, but I think it's a good practice for everybody else. You know what I mean? That's fine. So for that one, there's no vote. No, we're going to wait. We're going to wait to draft the next week. Yeah. Um, now I think I can say discussion on fire chief next steps. <laughs> I guess we are, we're, we're all aware that we made an offer and that offer was not accepted. Yeah. And we had two other candidates in the pool. So um, we did get some feedback from the second candidate though, which we were proposing some a number which was intriguing, but a schedule which was not. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't so, interested in a part time role for a variety and, of reasons. And especially not one that would um, be remote. Right. So I, I think he probably needs to be contacted and, and spoken to because yeah. I'm not sure that what he wrote is what he meant to write. What I heard. Is okay. It, I, I don't know how you, it's like having a, a hire an electrician and having him work from home. Right. It's, just, it's not sensible. <laughs> How's that going to work? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like hiring a pipe fitter, have him work from home, right? All the guys in 537 will be home. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. remote is not a part I am at all. Could, could we invite both? Would you guys be interested in inviting both candidates back in to chat with? Would that be, what's your feelings on that, Dave? Just thinking of like, just to chat with them again. Yeah. You know, we have Farrell's reached out to us and say, hey, this is an idea. And then you know, Valentine, I think if we invite, if we have one come in, I would like to have the other one come in just to reconnect. Yeah. It worked well for us on the TA process. Yeah. But I'm looking to the gin. I was just gonna say it did. <laughs> Okay. Gotta know the world we're playing in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not opposed to doing that. So. No, I'm not opposed to doing it either. And was there a, a fourth candidate from that fire subcommittee? Uh, no. No, just those top three. There were a lot of applicants, right? And these there were the, yeah. these there are were, the three that really 16, only yeah, wow. Sure. Would it behoove us just process wise to throw it back out there? Or was that too arduous you to get to, to where we are well, now? You've got to reconstitute the committee. You have to okay. put that right. right. Exactly. It was a board that had charge. And I think we could find something good with either one of these two. We just need to make clear on what it is we're looking for. And um, I think that we should do that. Bring them yeah. both back in and have a powwow. All right. Yeah. Well, mind you, I'm going to be away. From this Friday through the 18th. So you may have to. August 18th? Yeah, in December. Yeah. And I'm gone that <laughs> week of July. Well, okay, hold on All a right. second. <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> hold on a minute. Let's. I am get gone this July 8th up. through the 18th. 7 8 through 7 18th. Okay, now what's your story? I'm gone from the 18th to the 24th. Really, actually, the 15th to the 24th. Okay, so so there's a message there because between the 18th and the 24th, Leah and I need to come sign the warrants. Okay, got yeah. that. No, yeah. I'm not sure. On the 20th. Sorry. And so, theor not theoretically, actually from 7 8 until 7 24, we don't have a full board. Right. 
And so if we're gonna have these five chief candidates come back in, they're gonna to have to be Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> have to be an Asian Amesbury New Report. You have to be an Amesbury New Report. Yeah. Gone. Thursday. Tomorrow night. So. Oh, yeah, it's birthday. <laughs> Come on. Get one every year. She does. <laughs> Some carry more weight than others. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have to have that as a post. Some meeting. carry more weight than others. <laughs> <laughs> We'll bring the five chief candidates in the post that we're going to have. Yeah. 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 So we, sh we just shot yeah. ourselves in the foot. We can't do the setup. But we have Kerrigan until he was an interim. 31st, he's going to interim. Yeah. So, and I, I know Joan has a question as well. Once we figure out our dates, I will look to her red hat for a question. So I think we got to do those, those meetings on the 25th, on Monday, July 25th. You okay with that? You guys okay with that? Yeah. Fine with me. Mm -hmm. We'll do it at 4 p.m. And time. then we do the rest of our meeting that night rather than come back on Tuesday the 26th. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Let's just get it all done. Yeah, I'm okay. So this is July 25th. 25th. Two, <laughs> yep. And that's at 4. Yeah, yeah. 4 p.m. that day. Yeah, 4 p.m. And that'll be our that would cover the July 19 meeting that we usually have scheduled. Yeah, it's town we, election. Day. Yep, and we would meet again on oh, August. Oh, you guys know that? Uh, well, I'll be I here was, to vote. I'll be back. I won't be. But I missed my shot to do that for tonight. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's discussion on Fire Chief. But, Joan, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I just. Uh, was curious, so is the first guy totally off the table now or so? Yeah, so he, he received a secondary offer from us um, with some other terms and he reviewed it with his family and did not find that it was attractive enough to make a call or make the decision to you know, sign the constable, if you will, to accept our offer. Um, he said it, you know, it was improved, but it was not moving enough for him to leave Fitchburg, I think. Maybe he got some cold feet. I don't, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but maybe some cold feet and a real love of where he is now, so. Now, when you, I know the, the thought was that the, the number that was reflected, you know, what everybody was at the part of Stemma. You know, when, is there any kind of wording or anything that says that, uh, that you know the, the pay for this job is you know up to you know this amount depending on the experience i mean is that uh, it's always a possibility huh? yeah absolutely yeah i think you know the budget has a number of what would be Top for end. that but it doesn't have to be that but when I mean, anybody looking at it is to say oh yeah oh, that's what their eyes are going to water right this is yeah. this what, uh, we didn't we, we were trying to we're trying to work that out but the, the, the Patrick Roy thing didn't have anything to do with salary this guy captain in the Fitchburg fire department you know they're doing 10 building fires a week right. he's not going to come to Dunstable for 100 calls a year and his kids are in Catholic schools in Fitchburg his fan the Roy's in Fitchburg are like the Shaddox and Pepper oh, okay. same I mean, yeah. it, it seemed that these were things that would have been on his mind, and he would have sort of thought about these before applying for a position. But yeah, that might be yeah, it, 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 it's a good practice to go out. I mean, just philosophically, to go out and interview. Maybe he wasn't sure, and you know, he interviewed very well with us. He thought, I thought personally, I thought um, so. but you know what? It's, it's a family decision more than anything. You know, it's, yeah. That's their call. That's not ours. So. Yeah. So yeah. we're gonna work at it and hopefully get someone in that is good and can reduce and then, that number down. And uh, what was it? Sixteen people apply for the job. Is uh, so are those people now all off, off the list and you have to start over again or what? Well, there was a board that was a committee that was put together that brought these three or four candidates forward. Sweet. And so we would have to reconvene that board and have them 
you know, we, we assess, which I don't think we're ready to do yet because we still have two so others. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. We have two viable candidates still in, in the process. So. And we've learned a little bit from chatting with Roy, you know, but it didn't work out, but we, we have some certain new knowledge now that we can use to say, you know, what our expectations are of the job and make sure it's aligned with what these two other candidates <coughs> might want to do, because it may not be the same. Yeah. If they're only interested in 20 hours a week and part of it on a, on a computer, not here in town, then maybe that's not the right fit. Or if they're interested in just- Right now we have Patrick as interim chief. chief. No, right. he's acting chief. As what's that? As acting. acting. As acting chief. Um, is he technically is he qualified to to assume the role of chief? He is. he is. He is. He is. He absolutely is. Is he credential? He's not, but uh -huh. he's not credentialed as a fire chief, but he is as an officer. He's he's got mass fire mass fire academy officer certification. Not Nashua or Manchester, Mass by Academy. So he's he's so right guy for that temporarily. He's acting, so it's not a long it's not a long term. We're not bringing Zibby back. What's that? We're not bringing Zibby back. We're not bringing who back? Chief Chief Zibby, the chief who just oh Chief Z. Yeah, Chief Z. Okay, we're moving so. on. Um, next on the, we, so we had discussed larger field already with Phil, hopefully that's going well in that meeting. Um, next on the agenda is update on affordable housing project proposed for the mixed use district. I'll let Dave give that or I can, whatever. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, at this point, we have held <coughs> a meeting uh, to discuss uh, in open and review uh, of the two proposals that were forwarded to the committee uh, from potential developers. Um, the uh, review is still continuing. I believe it's on Monday. It is, We're yeah. We're have a second uh, sit down to talk about, you know, what the, the, each of the candidates meet uh, the minimum uh, threshold criteria, as well as if, if they address specifically uh, the items that were needed to be addressed and or whether we need to get additional information from them. The, the minimum threshold has to be met. The additional information can be requested from the candidates after they've met that minimum threshold. Yes. Um, and that's going to happen Tuesday. We do have a consultant, uh, uh, Jen Goldson. Goldson. Yep. And uh, she has taken a look at the proposals and uh, has uh, presented her thoughts on that, which will be shared with the committee on uh, Monday night, and hopefully we'll, you know, have a decision from there uh, to have either one or both of the uh, developers in uh, to interview with the board selectman, which is called upon by uh, the RFP, and then the board will make a uh, an award of the, of the lease of the land, basically. <clears throat> Did their submissions include any sort of layout design plan? They do. I mean, yeah. uh, I had, so I, I sit on that board. I had read both plans uh, or both proposals. Uh, in my interpretation, one of them meets the criteria, uh, and with Jennifer's expertise, one of them does not. Mm -hmm. um, so it may lead us to just having one to truly review. Mm -hmm. uh, but as a board. You know, it, hasn't been on, but... it hasn't been voted on, but um, you know, that was just sort of the initial, like my personal read of it. Mm. Um, and they do have some, you know, one of them has some design work within how it would look down there in the mixed use district, uh, you know, with some buildings, you know, layouts, floor plans. Is that something that can be shared with us yet or not? Nice. I don't see a reason why not. Yeah, it's a public you, document. You've opened it. The committee has it in its possession. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Can you email that? It could probably be email uh, that. I think I get that on key. Yeah, it should be on a flash drive. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
update screen. We can do it if we can upload. We have a Dropbox. Do we have a Dropbox? Yeah. yeah. I guess I upload the key on it. Yeah. Dropbox and then we'll send it a link. We'll figure yeah. that out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but these uh, look forward to the next steps in the process. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Joan? Uh, yeah, this meeting is uh, Monday the 11th at the town hall, right? I believe so, yeah. I know we had a, there was a Zoom issue at the last one because we also had a housing production plan discussion. Right. And that NIMCOG person was hosting the meeting, which kind of, back, which kind of backfired on us when their part of the meeting was done. The, the meeting ended. Saw wrong, so yeah, the, the meeting dropped. I uh, yes, I, I was not happy about that. Yeah. So I I just wanted to double check my information. Yeah, we, we should be in person. I, again, I'm ninety five percent sure we're in person Monday night. Yeah, I think at seven. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Nope. Yeah. Discussion regarding pursuit of special legislation to seek name change from Board of Selectmen to Select Board. This all came up about three and a half years ago now. Uh, so it's the beginning of the governance committee. Uh, well, I think among this board, probably when I first got on six years ago. And it was going to be incorporated into the charter. So it was incorporated into the draft charter, but um, the governance committee steered away from putting forward the charter and went with the TA bylaw instead. Um, so I think it, you know, it just would be coming up to the times to make it more of an appropriate board. I don't particularly appreciate to be calling the select man most of the time. Um, we could go the opposite way and call you all select ladies instead. Uh, that's fine. I think that's a great idea. Let's do that. Select we'll lady, definitely be in cutting edge. Select lady Michael. We had we 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 were gonna do this, right? Yeah. And we had the way I understand it is we had a petition of legislature to change the name. I that's why I went and got my computer because when I started yeah. thinking about that. I'm not and I know you said that it, it requires a legislative act. However, uh, from what I was looking at other towns and how they handled it, they, they either had a bylaw or a charter, mm -hmm. and they went to the town meeting, in, or they had a specific um, section of the town general bylaws that said board of selectmen would require going back to town meeting and mm -hmm. correcting that part of it. Whether it requires like legislative action. I believe it would because they are a statutory committee. Your board exists as a matter of Massachusetts general law, in fact, numerous legislation that describes your board as the board of selectmen and refers to you frequently as selectmen and powers they are so assigned. My understanding is that when a board is established and named specifically by Massachusetts general law, the only way to effect a name change is to request that the general court pass special legislation, just like you had to do with the town clerk becoming appointed in order to receive that dispensation. But a lot of towns do it through the charter because the charter can also do it. And in this yep. case with the charter, you were looking at a special legislation charter anyway. Right. So it made sense at that time. <coughs> the only caution I have for you is it's very likely that the general court will never actually call you to select board. They'll probably refer to you in some phrase like our board of select being known as the select board. For example, Greenfield changed their name to town of Greenfield because they didn't want to be a city. And yet the general court without fail always refers to them as our city known as the town of Greenfield. <laughs> you never really win with the general court. No, I am not going to call it. So no. how did this get on the agenda? I had asked for it a while ago. And yeah. so what is it that we need to do to move this forward so that we so we change that name? Can we well why would we do approve the charter? Yeah, you have to either <laughs> approve the charter or change any language in, in the original. Uh, bylaws it says you know, town meeting follow the board so do your town meeting vote. Yeah. But well, we did that. Did we didn't we take this to town meeting? No. no. Maybe four years ago? No. Jay? 
you no, never take this to town? I, I, it no. seems like I remember this four years ago. You discussed I, it as part of the charter. Yeah. It's probably what you're remembering. It was discussed in the charter. Because you were so in the charter at this time. I, you I, know, I think we don't need to rush into this, but no, I, 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 it's been, I it's been kicking around for a long time. Yeah. I don't, it's not a rush into a thing. I think we ought to put motion in place to find out what we need to do to legally change that name. Mm -hmm. And let's go down that path and take it that way because I think it's the right thing to do. But you look around, and most a lot of towns it's select board. Yeah, they, they, that is the trend sort of along that way. And one of these days, there were going to be three women sitting up here. Maybe. Hope so. Three people. Yeah. Select people. Select people. Select three Select residents. People. Yeah, what you do? You could, yeah. Like I said, I was. When I did yeah. look at the, the different towns that have, uh, have done it, I, I, like I said, there's definitely a procedure. I couldn't find it on. on yeah, the, yeah, maybe Brian can guide it some yeah. guidance, but I try to move that forward, not let it sit in. It's been sitting there. Right? <coughs> kind of like I look at my Actually, what I'll do is we'll do the final box next to the okay. naming convention and how it's defined in the law. Okay. Um, All right, good. Thank you. Yeah, it'd be good. Be more inclusive. In yeah. Um, we have two executive session topics, but I suspect we should. Neither one. Neither one. Yeah, neither one are valid, right? Yeah. Or useful. Um, Unless you want to, I guess you, you don't know who your finalist is going to be for the part. No, we don't. Do not, no. No. What about 39 Lowell yeah. Street? Yeah, the gentleman who was uh, had suggested that we do that. I, I contacted him by phone call and uh, by email, and he didn't respond back. So. Okay. I told him that if he didn't hear back, that we were just going to postpone until a later date. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so we'll look to shift that to that July 2 5 okay. topic. Um, any old business? Anything on your radar, Dave? Okay, uh, I did talk to Henry Fontaine about the bandstand. He says he's going to get to it in the next three, four days. Uh, he did bring up an interesting question as to if we make substantial improvements under the building code, uh, there's a certain threshold that kicks in mm -hmm. uh, that requires us to make the structure handicap accessible. Mm -hmm. So there may be potential, given if it's a substantial renovation, uh, we may meet that percentage and as a result have to put a ramp on it, which we could, you know, have it yeah. done, you know, historically, you know, maintaining the historical integrity of it and just make sure it's not on the front or the back or yeah. take some innovative approach to make it fit into the structure. Okay. Uh, I'm in the process of finishing up the green communities closeout report. Uh, just to let the board know, hopefully by the end of the week, I'll have that done. Great. Um, we have talked, uh, the chief and I, uh, about and, and Karen about the, putting together some bargaining points mm -hmm. for the police contract. They're looking uh, third week to. Uh, to talk about that, so we're going to fit in a day that we can all uh, sit down. Yeah, and the dates they were talking about at the beginning of the month. Yeah, so can we do it maybe that 26th? Yeah. Is that too late? Yeah, because I was I'll be back late that Friday, the 22. I could, I could do the afternoon of 22, I think. And we, we'd want to have that on an executive session on the 25th, so the board. We all go into the first, uh, generally the first uh, meeting is a ground rules meeting. Yeah. It's basically saying you're not going to run to the press <laughs> unless you give us 48 hours notice at any time, how many days, uh, how many meetings before we uh, stop accepting additional uh, items uh, as part of their proposal and as part of our proposal. Yeah. Uh, those kind of things are standard, you know, agreements that everybody, you know, agrees to and follows and uh we can choose to accept the proposals at first meeting but there won't be any substantive discussion about it because it's going to be the first time uh both of the parties have seen them so okay and then you'd have to say all right by meeting three 
you can't make any additional proposals as part of it. This is what we got. And then we'll start working, doing the real work to, to, to get it down to something that we, uh, both the parties can live with. Could we do that on Zoom on the 22nd? Or is it after you? The Zoom soon? is going away as of the 15th. Okay. okay. I haven't yeah. heard the governor extending that. that. Okay. Oh, in terms of our meeting, we could do it because we're not an official board. If you wanted to, you, me and the chief wanted to. I could do that like Thursday the 21st. So that's about, <coughs> about yeah. We're not an official. Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're not here to open meeting. Let's look for 721. We can email and find a time that works for everyone and go from there for an hour or something. Uh -huh. yeah. um, the, uh, we, we're reposting the town clerk's uh, position. Uh, I did uh, hear a potential local resident that has some experience in town clerk's operations cool. that may be applying. Okay. So I'm hopeful that that is going to happen. Um, I'm also going to talk to the consultants we mentioned, just to get a feel from them in terms of what they think, yeah, I think that's how it would work. A good idea. Um, the planning and conservation position closed. We have one applicant, although I know that there's another applicant that's interested and it's open to fill kind of thing. So okay. Okay. I would be comfortable to saying that other person could forward that we'd have two applicants and mm -hmm. let's yeah. move forward with that. And we're also going to be sending over to the collector's information that's we're putting it in various and sundry places where uh, uh, get some attention to advertise. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually talked to on the um, Mass Human Resource Board today to a woman who uh, is an HR director and she uh, had mentioned about a D and I was wondering how they would do it because when I read about that it was extremely costly. So I, I wanted to get some feedback from her as to what her approach was to it and am I missing something yeah. that I didn't hear back from her. Um, <clears throat> advisory is meeting next week when the end of year transfers. Uh, there was a lengthy discussion at that meeting, the prior, prior advisory meeting about the whole debt question and what happens next, that kind of thing. So, yes, uh, interesting. We're going to find out. Um, we, <laughs> uh, the MUD uh, group is uh, the affordable housing is going to be meeting on the MUD proposal next week. Uh, we also had a, uh, a kickoff meeting for the housing production plan. Uh, which is uh, 96 hours that we've got from uh, the regional planning group. And there's going to be a lot of data collection. So we've got to figure that out. Okay. I, that, that's going to be a comprehensive project. So yeah. It's going to be very time consuming. So we're going to have to figure out a way to, to sort of spread uh, that responsibility around a little bit with the committee members and myself. Or, yeah. I bet Cheryl knows some of that stuff too. So it's sort of. We may not heard before she runs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking about it for the next department head meeting, probably in the next couple of two, three weeks. So okay. that's it. Uh, that was old business. That was probably also the interim town administrator's report there. That was one thing on your notes, Jake, is I'm no longer signing the warrants. Yeah, oh, I didn't know the status. Yeah, I'm going to do that. No. Yeah, it's here. I noticed that. Every time I read it, it's like, <laughs> yeah. okay. <laughs> we got to change that. Sorry. Do, so, actually, this is more of a question. How is that process defined that it's like, so you have me signing things that I don't oversee day to day, which is a little precarious. Right. I know. Well, it so, always would be the whole board would do it. We used to review them all at a meeting, and then every just, board that well, it, it, then it, we voted it, to have just the chair review it. And, yeah. Um, but the last yeah. couple of communities I worked in, the whole board signed it. They had the thing there. They just passed it down. Yeah. Okay. You're not comfortable signing. <laughs> well, I mean, for instance, I don't know all the hours that someone could be working here. You know, like Jake puts his hours down, but I, I'm not here day to day. And, you know, if Jake works more time, then, you know, we don't pay him properly. That's on me because I'm the one who signs it, that it, he, it's an error. Whereas we have sort of a hierarchy within the town. It's, you have a, 
assistant town administrator and the interim town administrator shouldn't, shouldn't the town administrator sign it and then Actually, say, hey, I've approved it. Yeah, you have signed it. In fact, what, in a couple of meetings, uh, as in my capacity as town administrator, I've signed the warrant, it, as well as randomly selecting different invoices a couple every week to make sure that they follow the proper procedure in terms of preparing the goods and things like that. And I send back to say, you know, this is saying, just, uh, just tell me how you prepared this. Yeah. yeah. I guess because in the event that something's wrong, then it's me yeah. who's answering before or whatever, but I'm not a paid professional within the town. And, you know, just like Leo wasn't, and next year yeah. you will. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, right, you have another career yeah. path that's not no, no, being a. I don't think that it's a, I don't think that's, it's a matter of liability. I think it's just like, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a gap. It's like a yeah. Because most of the departments have reviewed their own budgets. Well, oh, they, everybody's department, the timesheets, you know, like the board, of, the conservation. Everybody has to test them the timesheet. Yeah. The, 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 what they report is. Yeah. So uh, shouldn't, uh, couldn't we have that, like, you've signed everything and then I'll sign what you, but it's like a double, it's like a double check. Mm -hmm. I don't know, for a, I don't know the community yeah. It's not something to decide today, but it's just sort of funny. Those communities have charged because my understanding of the law is that if there has to be two or three selectmen for one, the designated the requirement is to the board as the chief of staff and the officer of the community at the time. Even though I did a review in the other communities, ultimately, still the board. Yeah. Because my understanding was signing the warrants was non delegable. It has to be approved by the legislature. No, no, wait, it's not what? The, the no. signing of warrants has to be done by the select board. It cannot be, as I understand, delegated to any other official without express legislation, usually town chair. Yeah. It's, it's a bigger, bigger discussion, I know, but it just, it, it, it's precarious to me to think that we're signing something that you look at it for two seconds. Sometimes <laughs> less, and it's a lot of money. Like last well, last week was one hundred and like one hundred and thirty six or one hundred sixty three thousand dollars for payments to over that week. I'm like, well, where do you see the school bill? When that right. Comes in? Yeah, so, and I know like, that's coming, but I'm like, well, and I I know we have very good responsible departments, but just something as we build out a future TA role as well. Like this is something that we should have the TA sign he and can, then the chair. But he could make a mistake as well. Absolutely. And he's not the one who's ultimately responsible. I mean, we still are responsible for it regardless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but like just to have another check and balance of, yeah. and like he said, you know, one out of 10 bills, he may pull and double check like, yeah. oh, this yeah. is the cable bill, whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's, oh, it's, you know, there's not an error here this week. Or, well, do you, pull a tape, you pull a phone bill and you see that you have 10,000 texts. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, you're, or you're from the town. Yeah. Like, okay. I actually have that happen. It's like if, if you're texting 10,000 times during the course of a month, you're not doing the job. Yes. You know? or, or the data consumption, right? You can say, all right, well, then you know, someone in our certain group is just watching YouTube yeah. on they brought the unit the cox. So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, just something that it, it, it seems a little. I, mean, I guess I it comes down to your comfort level. I mean, I did, and I did it for four years. I didn't, I, initially, I was sort of feeling like you do that. Am I really ultimately responsible for this? I don't think I would be entirely on the hook for every any mistake. Yeah. Because each department, like with Cheryl's payroll, it's reviewed by the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. We all review it there and we vote on it and it gets signed. And you know, the same thing with the planning board. And I think Jake, you're the only one that, that you and Paul but yeah, the only ones that I actually it's just because of the way the hierarchy is yeah. yeah. not having time to minister just in all situations. Yeah. That could be probably be changed to be David. It's just that yeah. whoever replaces it, yeah. it yeah. Have to yeah. Yeah. Brian initially started signing wars and then he stopped. I think because my position was changed um to assistant town administrator, at which point then it was the chair that was signing. Because technically in that case I, I sort of answer to you as well as to the town administrator. It's kind of like an odd chain of command, but it's yeah. not as difficult to be able to the secretary of defense in that sense. Um, but the other thing to consider Thank you. 
Do you have anything to consider about besides um, the need for the warrants to be reviewed by you? Is the town accountant also signs the warrants and ultimately really for signature legally, at least on um, the checks going out the door, is the fair amount one? Yeah. And I can tell you she is, as most town accountants are, the guardian of the gate for the warrants. Nothing is going through without her reviewing it first to determine if there are funds available to pay it and that yeah. it's appropriate. And where it's coming from. If she department. has a question on something, she will call it before you probably even see it. So she really is the one that ultimately is your financial officer, is the one that's that's saying this is okay for you. Because she's signing it before you do. Right. So she's saying it's okay for you to sign. Really, you're signing it is because the law just sort of expects that as the chief executive, you're going to be reviewing it and you have the authority to pull something and say, I have a question. But really, at the end of the day, it's really the town. What and then Susan to... reviews it as well. Susan, and then puts, Susan it puts it up to Bonnie, and then Bonnie puts it forward to yeah. So it goes through several. Yeah, things. Bonnie also reviews it. Yeah, and they they check. Check. yeah. plenty of them. Because wasn't that the city of Gardner that had the town account and funneled like two and a half million dollars away from the town? I don't think that's happening. That's what I'm I, 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 know, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's classic Dunstable to say, oh, it doesn't happen yeah, here. No, I know, I know. <laughs> I know what you're saying. Like every time we use that line, like yeah. it's that's so why we have to be honest the account of the treasurer's books and the staff with each other. Yeah. yeah, checks and balances on each other. But if the, something like that happens, it's one of those officers fail. But the yeah. town audit was kind of useless because Brian found that free cash issue, right, Ron? Right? Like, I mean, like, I know it's <clears> in practice supposed to be valid, but like, the audit isn't comprehensive. The audit is sampling. Yeah. Generally, what they do is they take certain files and they review. Yeah. yeah. It's not. It's not a comprehensive. Uh, let's go through every bill. Yeah. And see what's going on. You know. And they actually said there were some suggestions of some of those accounts that had money in it. Yeah, in terms of turning yeah. back into. That happens yeah. quite a bit. You get. Yeah. Uh, Funds that were set up for the poor in 1900. Yeah, they they put in a hundred dollars and now it's fifteen thousand. Yeah, they didn't know where they took the money. Yeah, but it, <laughs> wasn't it added up like thirty five thousand yeah. dollars? Didn't it in that yeah, audit? It substantial. So, yeah, you need to get they have to use it or to give it back. Yeah, or, or and once again those kind of things that they set up as a trust. You have to go back to the trust and oh, yeah. dissolve it. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it's a process. Yeah. But anyway, sorry. That was my for a rainy day. Yeah, rainy day topic. <laughs> uh, we have some minutes to approve or discuss. I she think we can approve, except that change that she has in there about well, that was the warrant. Well, this is his week. That's my memo. It was not, not, not in the minutes. I didn't see that. I didn't check the minutes for that though. It's, it's do you? Oh, that's not a That's true. Right. <laughs> uh, I'll approve, uh, yeah. I motion that we approve the June 14th and June 21st meeting, meeting minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.